So won't you make me dizzy from your kisses? Hey guys, so we are back with the reviews. Good to see you again. Oh my gosh, took my hood down and now you see all the crazy going on. But what is yeah. up, you guys? We are, oh, look, we are wearing back. gray hoodies. We are wearing gray hoodies. <laughs> <laughs> we just fit the theme today. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, not so, on purpose. Welcome back. It's Sunday, you guys. We really hope that you Sunday. had a good, relaxing week. Uh, if what's you're going on with the... you, Lily? <laughs> um, I'm existing. I'm here existing. Mm -hmm. Um, allergies have finally kicked off for me. Yeah, it's same. very exciting for all of you to hear that. Um, time for me to take, take my pill. So thank you for reminding me. I'm doing that right now. <laughs> you're welcome. Jordan's gonna do drugs on stream. Welcome to the stream. I feel like Europeans like regulate Israel. Really. Like we don't. Um, well, I mean, yeah, Benadryl needs to be regulated. It's kind of a dangerous drug, so. I mean, it is. But, like, how else am I supposed to keep my kids quiet on a long car ride? <gasps> you you, oh, no, you just don't. revealed the American secret. But anyways. <laughs> yeah, that's a secret. No, I take Flonase. So I have a nasal spray I take. Um, mm. Yeah. Anyways, I had to break that out this morning. Other than that, I'm fine. How about you? I am doing all right. So, uh Ever, it's weird. Ever since getting home from Madrid, I kind of noticed that I, I almost had like a chest infection, but it's no, I'm just allergic to the continent and the allergies are just that bad. Uh -huh. Coming so back home funny. where it's just, yeah. What's funny is once I cross the Mississippi River, I, my allergies go away. So like, it's weird. yeah, the Mississippi is like the borderline between me having allergies and me not having allergies. Um, that is so odd. Not, yeah. I just noticed my lips aren't even too, so we're not going to worry about that. <laughs> Okay, if I oh, yeah, smile, I can't, I can't notice. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Oh, uh, yeah. So this week we have articles from the site. There weren't really that many updates with the Eurovision happening mm -hmm. this week. Um, and then we also, of course, have reviews to get to. So should we kick it off with site articles? Yeah. So you guys, we have one article about the Portuguese competitor Yolanda, who uh, I did interview in Madrid, and you will see another interview later on in the season with Yolanda. But this article uh, is titled, A Shout of Hope, Does Portugal's Eurovision Momentum and Festival de Canção's winner, Yolanda, propel them to the top this May in Malma. And that is talking about the history of Portugal in Eurovision, kind of what the prospects are given the, given the very unique trajectory of their songs and the decisions that they've made in Festival de Canção up until now. But Portugal has always been an extremely unique case in Eurovision. Yeah. Go ahead and check it out to kind of just get our take on the Portuguese journey, and especially with Yolanda and her son Grito. Yeah. And then we also had our fan feature Friday of the week. And this mm -hmm. one was a gusto. I think this one's in Spanish. Yes, it is. So if you are a Spanish speaker, then you can check it out. Augusto is ahead of our like um, social media team. Mm -hmm. You've met him before on stream. He's bubbly. He's fun. We love Augusto. Mm -hmm. If you hear Augusto, hello. I don't know. He usually pops up every once in a while. Hola, Augusto. Yeah, he's he might he might pop in. But yeah, go ahead and check him out. He's yeah, our wonderful PR exec. And overall, he's just a ray of sunshine. So yeah, check it out, you so guys. So much fun. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so that was it for articles. Of course, you guys can read those in the description box mm -hmm. below. Um, also, since we already have 11 people here, if you want to hit like if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and do that. It usually makes more people show up if you hit like mm -hmm. um, yeah. as the stream is going on. So we have reviews this week. We are going to be talking about Australia, Belgium, Lithuania, the UK, and Switzerland. Mm -hmm. um, you already heard people guess what the theme was last week, so no spoilers, yeah. I guess. <laughs> um, and yeah, let's go ahead and kick things off. You want to start off with um, Australia. Criteria? Oh, oh, the criteria. Yeah, before I, we even get into the countries. So once again, I'm going to give you guys the criteria in case there's anyone new who's coming to the stream. We look at the songs based on five criteria. So the first is lyrical content. We deconstruct the lyrics, see if anything stands out to us, and see if uh, there's anything that we find has more nuance. Second thing, um, the produ production and genre. So without the lyrics, we take a look at the acoustics of the song, the elements, of like certain genres that were implemented into it and all that we can dissect just based on the wavelengths of the sound without the lyrics. Um, the third thing is unique elements. So is there anything about the song or performer performance kind of like within that range of things that we find to be the unique kind of star quality that sets it apart from the other entries in the lineup? Fourth thing, uh, how well can it be, be performed live? 
And that we can't answer for everybody because not everyone has performed live yet, but a lot of them have. So I'm pretty sure we can answer that for everyone in this list except for one country. Yeah, but I mean, I can I can diverge. We, we can, yeah. Hear we, vocals from another live performance, no problem. Easily. Maybe. Yeah. Um, so, and the fifth yeah, criterion. I'm... Oh, <laughs> oh, sorry. No, that's all right. Hi, Augusto. Hi, Augusto. He's here. And the fifth criterion, you guys, is uh, do we personally consume the song? Do we personally stream the song? Um, yeah. All of those criteria together, we kind of sum it up to come to a conclusion on whether or not we think the song is going to qualify. But then again, we could be wrong. So yeah, that's how we analyze the songs, you guys. And I'm ready to get started. All right, let's go ahead and kick things off. So the first one on our list is going to be Australia. We've got so happy that we have Electric Fields. I know, coming. Ah, finally. I've been waiting for five years. Um, which is wild to me because it's like I, I can't believe it's been five years since I was introduced to these guys. I know. Um, so yeah, Electric Fields is going to be performing their song, One Milak Mikali. Oh my gosh, mm. I cannot pronounce things. Um, One Blood. So let's go ahead and start off with lyrical content then. Yeah. My, all right, let's go ahead and kick things off there. Lyrically, um, I'm not going to like there's not a lot happening. But there are different metaphors being painted that I appreciate mm -hmm. with this one. Um, I do like kind of the opening, like the opening kind of stanza, I guess is what we call this, mm -hmm. rather than just a verse. Oh, you said stanza. Never mind. That, that's, <laughs> my mind went somewhere else. Yeah, that's right. Stanza? Uh, stanza like applies a... more to poetry. You hear that less in, in reference to sections of songs, but it happens. Well, never mind. My parent, my grandparents weren't as clever when they named my aunt as I thought they were. <laughs> um sorry um all right and it's her birthday oh happy yeah. birthday she's dead who cares oh um rest in peace lady um. So weird. Uh, we're birthday heavy this week in my family the story started and ended within this conversation <laughs> so we have the i stand in the eye of the spiral one of the mm. billion billions i like that like kind of that opening line especially because it's like immediately I'm celestial. I'm in the mm -hmm. sky. Yeah. And like hearing all the lyrics, like with throughout the whole song, I'm brought back into that whole like being in the galaxy, if you get it. Mm -hmm. And then we have like the reference to the Fibonacci sequence, which again fits that whole metaphor of the spiral and being celestial and yeah. Coming and together in that way. It's and really nice. It's gorgeous. It's like oh point mm -hmm. six one eight. Like it's rhythmic, yeah. but it also is just like oh yeah, the the way that kind of like the universe has has like things figured out, and it kind of is it's like comforting at the same time. <laughs> yeah, and it's like this like this whole thing, and like I already know because I see somebody in chat who did express their dislike of this line, mm -hmm. but the to the Fleetwood to the Fleetwood Max and the Janets. I love that line. I know it's kind of cheesy. I like it too. It is it's cheese, but you know what? It's it's a good cheese. I mean, my first concert ever, aka I was still in the womb, was a Fleetwood Mac concert. So we love that. No, it wow. wasn't. I'm lying. It was a Stevie Nicks concert with the first concert ever. Both before I was born and after I was born was a Stevie Nicks concert. Um Very if you can't tell my father was a Stevie Nicks fan. <laughs> and then of course we love Janet Jackson but like mm -hmm. it kind of references like these old school musicians in a way that I tend, find to be really appealing yeah it's like just like I'm okay with these lyrics I feel like they're very comforting in a way I really enjoy these lyrics and it's because like there's almost a shamanistic ceremonial quality to them yes if, if you haven't noticed um I don't or like if anyone in the chat hasn't noticed this really feels like the only kind of like we are one type of song this year yeah it's like everyone's united kind of a song no one is weirdly no one's really doing that this year which is odd because typically in eurovision we have a, like a handful of songs where it's just like yay peace we're one yeah all united stuff like that but it's yeah. like it's like mad corny here it's i don't i don't get corny at all like the way the lyrics carry over one another they they it just really works out and um, this section here, escape with us to the planets to the Fleetwood Max and the Janets, Mil Kalila, while entertaining the gods, and then moved yeah. on to we're on a gravitron as it tangles with them billions. It, 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 yeah, you're, you're right. It has the celestial quality, but it has a quality of attaining celestial quality. It's like yeah. we, are, we are achieving that through yeah. unity. 
and ah, uh, gosh, it's it's so nice that Australia is bringing that to us, and that Electric Fields is. I I don't care that this is not a very liked song overall in the fandom. I love it so 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 much, and I play it all the time. Honestly, yeah. I mean, you already mm. answered one of the questions we have later on in the thing, but I'll answer to. I, I, I know, I know, I know. Too. Sorry, you guys. I, I mean, like, I personally am not a big fan of like the message song. Uh -huh. I think that this is going to lean into like our special qualities and production and stuff because like usually those songs are so cliche your typical yeah. message song sounds like whatever the hell ireland was doing last year um that kind of thing just i have no appeal to it's like it's trying to be anthemic in a mm -hmm. way that appeals to everybody by appealing to nobody in particular this very one, youth kind pastor of music with, it really is it's yeah. giving i'm gonna sit in the backwards chair because i'm cool like that you know what i mean like it's yeah. i hate that it's awful to me but this one has like the dancey qualities to it you're getting your anthemic quality from the lyrical content mm -hmm. and it's just a good song so it kind of joins everyone together based on a hey this is good as our message yeah. it's like a world peace song without hitting all the cliches that mm -hmm. make those songs insufferable it's it's a world peace song that feels Australian of all things. It's it doesn't feel I mean, weirdly global, aiming for like a we are the world type number that that's yeah. trying to go for like a basic washed out universality. It's not aiming for that. And then we get like some didgeridoo in there just to remind us, hey, it is Australian. Yeah, just, uh -huh. I do love that. And then and I'm just like, like hey, yeah. I love the didgeridoo. I love it in anything really. I love the didgeridoo. <laughs> It's exciting. Like I really, I really like this. I think it's fab. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, we think we've hit on everything. Unique elements, we've hit that did we do. Not ever kind of like your production and genre. It's dancey, but at the same time, like, you know, world uniting. There's, there's some funk in it. Um, it's oh, definitely yeah. pop, it's like electronic y, but it's electric yeah. fields. Like this is very distinctly an electric field song. And especially in the vocal delivery, you can tell that this is an electric field song. And like, here's the thing: is like, because we don't, we don't know what this one sounds like exactly live. Mm -mm. Ever, I know Zachariah can sing. Yeah, I know Zachariah can sing. And mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what was the um the clip the last? Oh my gosh, for Happy 2000 and whatever. Happy 2000 or, and whatever. Yeah, yeah, that one. They, it was just that should have been stage. their song. That should have been their song. Love it, you, Kate. Sure. But Zero Gravity, uh, that should have been the that song. we have <laughs> just two people on stage performing, mm -hmm. and Zachary is such an arresting performer. Like, mm -hmm. no. I'm sorry. Like, the, That's this it. This is going to be sold live. Like, yeah. uh -huh. the staging can literally just be the two of them standing there, and I'm going to I'm gonna buy it, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, just because we're talking about someone who's like a fantastic performer. So I'm just mm -hmm. going to kind of go into comments here. Um, let's see what we got here. So we have one from Arya Winning Sun. I do enjoy one Milaki um, more than the majority of people. I would like to I would like it to qualify over some of the predicted odd qualifiers, but I'm not sure if it will or will not. Yeah, I think it's kind of borderline for a lot yeah. of people. Yeah. I, I just have this confidence Australia is gonna pull it out. You know? I, I I have this feeling where it's just like the public is going to love it, and it's because of Zachariah's quality as a performer. Yeah, uh, you want to read Peter's? Peter Hydrich says, "If two countries mess up the staging, Australia is taking their spots." For now, I predict borderline and Q, but I can see getting them in after rehearsals for sure. It's electric fields. Come on now, exactly. exactly like we can't Peter. underrate the performance because I mean nobody's really paying attention to this song, but as soon as rehearsals come out, then we're going to be able to take it more seriously. And uh, Vanya Lubitsch says a message song, which isn't cliche. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. A hundred percent that. A hundred percent from Ariana. I want to like Win Milaki more than I do, but I'm hoping the live staging will boost it for me. I enjoy it though. It has positive energy. Mm. I, I do understand that though, because the release of One Mikali was very latent. It was very kind of just like chill, calmed out with the lyric video. Like no one was really clocking it. So I, I understand how there is just a general sense of over underwhelm so far. Yeah. And then Vanessa T says, I'm loving the Australian song. Their vocal is insane. And they posted a rehearsal video on their TikTok. They are qualifying. They're going to be great and live. And people are not expecting it. Good. Honestly, Thank you, Vanessa. <laughs> Does anyone else remember when like 
was anyone else watching anyone's live streams when Moldova first did the rehearsal? What was it, 2018? What year was Doritos? That was 2018, yeah. Yeah, 2018. If you watch the live streams of people who are in the in the um the hall, like watching rehearsals for the first rehearsal, as soon as that first run through ends, a bunch of people stand up and leave. It was like all the people who bet were standing up and leaving to go put their bets in. It's like, I, I don't know, maybe if we get one of those situations. Oh, gosh. Well, I mean, it very well could happen, like, because no nothing is certain, you guys. Yeah. Let's see here. All right. Let me, let me see. All right. So that is kind of our thoughts on Australia. Oh, do we think mm -hmm. it's going to qualify? I think it's borderline. It's, it's going to be hard, but it's possible. I think it's borderline, but I feel like it's borderline tipping towards more likely to qualify than not. I'm I'm gonna take a risk and say yeah. I'm gonna take a risk and say put them through. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and go on to the next one. We're talking about Belgium mm -hmm. before the party is over by Musti. Do you want to start with your lyrical thoughts? So the lyrics to the song, you guys, it it takes a more than just a first read to kind of get it. So I'm going to read to you the first kind of like chunk, the first verse. All we chase is shining in the moonlight. Are we sure the kids are all right or just playing it cool? Watch it fade. It's going to hurt from time to time. One more drink and I'll be fine. You're the living proof. Are you still playing the game or breaking the rules? I can see all the pain in the way that you move. Huh? Like, so there's there's this quality of um, celebration that is brought on by kind of just like this underbreadth of sadness, like a mm -hmm. profound, deep sadness that's that's kind of causing this uh, this state of dancing, almost almost like a an active hysteria as a response to as a response to like a shocking level of sadness is what it seems yeah. like to me. Yeah, I think it kind of has like this whole vibe of. I don't know. It's kind of giving me swimming pools a little bit in swimming a way, pools. oddly enough. Um, yeah, the Kendrick Lamar song, like, what was it, mm -hmm. five, ten years ago? Who knows? I'm elderly. I don't know what year it is anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but it has, like, this kind of, like, partying at the end of the world-esque vibe mm -hmm. or partying despite a dislike of the party. Mm -hmm. um, it, it has that kind of a vibe going on for it, for me, lyrically speaking. Um, it's like, I don't know because it's like I don't I have trouble connecting with this one still. Mm. Um, I like the fact that the structure is isn't like traditional because there's not really a chorus, is there? No, not really. And like kind of moving into projection and genre more, we don't really have a chorus, and your hook doesn't kick in until the song's more than halfway over. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. finally when you're coming in with like the hook, and the hook is just repeated over and over for the last what, minute. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, it just it feels a little odd. It feels a little uneven in that way because of that. I I see what you mean. Um, with the song, that last third of the song, but before the party is over, and how that's supposed to be kind of like the repetitive, like signal to show the audience, like we're we're kind of hitting like the climactic end of it. It is missing that climactic acoustic moment in order for it to kind of arrest the audience in the way that I feel like the Belgium de the Belgian delegation is trying to do. And yeah. I also have trouble here because when we get the hook and then it very specifically doesn't go anywhere after that. So yeah. we're, we're, I'm almost thinking like we're going to lean into staging. We're going to lean into visuals at that point in order to really, really sell it because I, like as, as just a listener of music, I personally would like some more dynamism just like to show me that that is, the climactic end of the song. I mean, they're trying to do it with the repetition of it, and that's typically really, really, really well done, but it's only really well done here. It's not so much that I'm drawn into it the same way because there there wasn't a specific signal to kind of tell me that, oh yeah, like it, it's uh, Musti's time to shine, basically. Yeah, I mean, I think another part of it I can see with like the interpretation of this is it kind of feels like, Parting at the end of capitalism in an odd way because it's like oh well we've got this little bit left before everything just is destroyed so mm -hmm. I don't know, like you can get an environmental theme to it as well like in a metaphor in that way i mean the more like when i look at this lyrically speaking 
I have more fun interpreting it than I do listening to the song. Mm. Which I think it gets issue with it because it just hasn't clicked for me yet. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert, I don't really stream this one. <laughs> just because like it, it takes a minute to get any, like takes two minutes to get anywhere. And then when we get somewhere, it's just staying there the whole time. Mm. You know, it doesn't it's really It's like from one plateau to another plateau. Yeah, it's like plateau. Okay, now we're gonna just hang out here for a bit until it's over. Mm. I don't know. Maybe the, maybe it's a metaphor for the song itself. The end of the party is when the song is over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So production and genre. Um, like it's it's James Bond theme. Is that a genre? It's Bondy. A- yeah. No, we we yeah. we've called things Bondy in the past. Yeah. We have. It's, yeah. it's giving me sonically. It's a James Bond theme. Mm-hmm. Lyrically, it's not. But sonically, you know, I can see the credits I getting shot. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't really watch. The last James Bond related thing I watched was a Japanese all women's theater musical production of Casino Royale that was oh, yeah. bonkers. Highly oh, yeah. recommended, but bonkers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about that. Um. So, yeah. Um, it's gospely. There's a little bit of a gospel quality to it. And that comes from like kind of the chanting in, in the back, in like the last third of a song. It it flies as a pop song. I, I need better help dissecting because I can't really move past the layer of just it's a pop song in in like the majority of the song. It it kind of feels I mean but it's the soulful. Choir, the choir doesn't really give me gospel. The choir just gives me choir. It just Ooh, gives me like it just gives me like a choral performance. There's nothing happening like chords wise, like because usually when you think gospel music, I'm hearing organ. I'm hearing like just certain chords mm. being hitting, mm-hmm. and I'm hearing usually get like good harmonies going on. But there's not really any harmonies. It's just like more you know, it's like voices. a Eurovision choir kind of occupying the backing track there. But yeah. it sounds like they just tuned everybody kind of to the same level on the same note and we're not getting like a variety of notes there to make some interesting harmonies. Mm-hmm. I think that would have been a nice touch there. Kind of elevate yeah, that. It would having, have been. Some, having something interesting going on harmonically, but I'm not getting that. I'm just hearing. And mm-hmm. I don't know if anyone's not like, I, I just put my hand across the string because again, it's plateauing. Mm-hmm. I'm not hearing anything interesting there. Yeah. The, um, there is not a ton of variety in terms of the production and it, it does leave it lacking. It does feel the track lacking. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Let's see. What else do we have unique left? Uh, I already answered. Huh? Unique. Unique elements. I feel like we've touched on that. It's there's not. I mean, the unique element, as I guess, it's there. It. It doesn't have any dynamism. The structure of the song is unique. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I'm sorry. Was that me? correct? No. I mean, like. <laughs> It's it's hard because, like I mean, we could say that Musti is the unique element, but at the same time, how many times have we said in the past that the performer is the unique element? Like there, with like w- there are so many cases where that is the case, where it's this one. You're almost seeking something else to to happen in order for it to be a standout kind of thing. So like even, yeah, I don't really can, know. I I, mean, I feel like anyone could sing this. Mm. You can give this to almost anybody and it's going to still sound good. It's a competently composed song. Um, you know, I don't really have any the structure is about... unique. The structure is unique. That, that's probably the most interesting thing about it is the structure. Mm-hmm. And then that's my biggest issue with it is the structure because it's just like, yeah. you know, yeah. Like, yeah, sorry. Do we um, think it's going to qualify? At this point, I, I think it might not. I really don't. I, I, I don't know if it's just because I don't connect with this myself. Mm-hmm. I don't really connect with this. And I feel like you're going to have to have good staging, but Belgium messes up staging so consistently. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's, it's like, the, they mess up staging like Greece. Like those, those two think, are like twins when it comes to messing up staging. I honestly think Belgium's worth it's worse at staging than Greece is. <gasps> I'm sure uh, thinking, well, like, mean, the last time I saw Belgian staging was like, wow, that looks great. I'm gonna say it was Hoover Phonic, but I feel like that's because they brought their own people in. Yeah, that's Belgium has a like... bad habit of like dark with white lights, but sometimes it looks straight up cheap, you guys. It looks cheap. I like their staging last year. 
They're sitting but again, it was great. a different broadcaster. Yeah. Was and a different approach different entirely. Broadcaster? Yeah, mm -hmm. they were. This is the French broadcaster. I don't trust the French broadcaster. Mm -mm. I'm trying to think of the last time they did something. And I was like, ooh, wow. And I can't think of anything. Let's see. They sent Jeremy in 22, didn't they? Yeah. The staging wasn't great. Nothing about that song was notable. Nothing I, about I'm that honestly thing. shocked that one qualified. I'm not going to lie. I, um, I'm not shocked it qualified because of all, like, of, of all the rest of the qualifiers. It was just meant to be a bad final that year. So. Yeah, I just don't know. I just yeah. have a feeling it's not going to make it. Let's get some comments here. Mm -hmm. um, Y'all, please contest against us. Or some... Here we go. So Peter says... Um, I do think it is qualifying, If but if someone were to force me to tell one country which I can be shocked non-qualifier, I would say Belgium. Yeah. Yeah. It was a favorite for a while. Like, people really did like it for a while, and people still really do like it, but I can't find exactly why yet. And then we have this one for Aria Winning Sun. I have bad opinions. I am aware, however, I think that Belgium is more borderline than people think. So me too is on an absolute bloodbath and the only certain non-qualifier is Albania. <sighs> My love. <laughs> My darling. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm giggling because I agree with you so much right now about Arya. Oh I really do. Yeah. I, I really, really, Albania. truly do. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Uh, I'm just looking to see if anything else. And then uh, B, Eurovision. Uh, from X says, Belgium always flirts with gospel but never commits. Yeah. I, uh, gosh. That's true. That's true. Because, like, look at what Hoover Phonic was doing. Like, that was flirting with gospel. Well, that was um, giving me blues. We're going to have to have yeah. a musicology class, Jordan. I'm going to have to teach you some musicology. <laughs> I know. Probably. <laughs> it's even a at this, word. At, at this point, yeah, I feel like I'm just throwing vocabulary out there. But... I mean, there is definitely gospel inspiration in blues music. Mm -hmm. But Hoover Phonic was giving me, like, it was more blues rock than anything to me. Mm. But that, you, you, honestly, concise. gospel doesn't like the gospel as it has had a heavy, heavy uh, has had a heavy influence on popular music in the last one hundred years. Mm -hmm. Very much. And so. Belgium thinks um, they got it. Gosh, Belgium, Belgique. Oh, mm. uh, oh, Belgium. Um, let's oh. see here. So, um, let's see. How well can it be performed live? I don't think we answered that one. Oh, it, he actually does perform this well live, I think. He does perform it well live. But he's also kind of performed it a little shaky, but that's only because he didn't get rest. Like, oh, from yeah, one party sweet. to the other. Yeah, like, that's the only reason why. But generally, very good vocalist. Yeah. I also wonder if he was on that flight that got canceled. Who knows? The one where that caused some drama. Like Nebulosa's, Nebulosa's flight was just like your flight. Honestly, I'm a Nebulosa hey, side on that. I'm gonna go home. <laughs> if I show up, my plane's not coming. I'm gone. I, I, yeah. I'm not that. I'm not that pressed. Back to bed okay. as is. <laughs> <laughs> All so, right. Um, yeah, we already answered if we think it's gonna qualify, and we said borderline. Uh, let's talk about Luke Felt. Look out, Luke Felt. Let's do it. Sorry, I'm like sitting there humming it in my head. Okay, let's talk about lyrics here. So, <laughs> you you start this time. Okay, so lyrically, again, I'm not like, it's in Lithuanian, so I don't have to like listen to lyrics and think about them as the song is going on. Mm -hmm. uh, but like looking at the English translation of everything, it does have like, there's lyrics in here about like rep like repetition mm -hmm. and it has a good amount of repetition happening in the song itself that kind of like paints that whole like okay we have day passed then tomorrow 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 i promise you i love you tomorrow mm -hmm. is like kind of like one of the lines there so it's kind of hanging out in this space where it's like there's a lot of repetition happening in the lyrics that's referenced mm -hmm. but it really suits the song because it's kind of giving us like a dancey kind of almost club-esque song yeah loungy yeah well i wouldn't say loungy i think you're gonna move a little more than you would at the lounge mm. well you maybe I mean? lounge. <laughs> when i hear lounge i think oh i'm gonna go to the kennedy center on the rooftop in the summer okay in the in the summertime on the rooftop of the kennedy center they have like bands you can go to for free 
And oh. it's like a it's like a nice little like atmosphere you can kind of sit and hang out in. That's what I think of when I think of lounge. Okay. Yeah. When I when I think of lounge, I think like you're going downstairs, like in an underground club, like under underneath like the drag restaurant that's like above you. But um No, that that's the dungeon, usually. At least here it is. The one I went to was a lounge, but anyways. <laughs> <laughs> the one I went to was a lounge. That's either the dungeon or the halal kebab place that's open until 3 a.m. Which, by the way, visit those halal kebab guys because they're great. We call it the sacrificial lamb where I live, and they're so good. Oh, oh that's actually a cute man. name. I like that. Isn't it? Yeah, I like that name a lot. I love it. I, I, I do want to highlight um, one section of these lyrics, you guys, because I, f I feel like it's the one that kind of explains the song. So, yeah. like, the bridge. We're standing in silence while the radio is playing. I don't want to dance anymore. I don't want to dance anymore. We're standing in silence while the radio is playing. I don't want to dance, but I have to dance, but I have to dance. This almost feels like a response to Musti's song, in a way. Where I it's mean, just a little like, bit, doesn't it? Where it's like you're paying out your life coins in order to continue dancing, and you don't want to continue doing that, but like something is, like there's a force that's making you, making your body move, basically. And I think that's really interesting. I think that is kind of like the lyrical crux of the song. I think it suits it because, like, going, let's talk about, you know, kind of transitioning into production and genre. This mm -hmm. song makes you move. When you mm -hmm. hear, it's so hard to listen to it and not want to dance. Even saying just Luke Talk one time, I'm ready to move my body. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm going to say something kind of, it's, it's spicy elevator music. It feels like okay. spicy elevator music. Like, something about it just kind of feels like, like you, you could sit there and hear this and stand and just like chill out. If you take away like the beat or if you take away like certain elements to it, it feels like elevator music to me. And it has a me, certain quality. It's that's on trend though. Like if we're mm. looking at what's happening in music, even bringing in outside of your vision, that whole quieter, almost elevator-esque music is having like a resurgence. Like I'm hearing mm. a lot more things with jazz influences I hear there's so many songs that have heavy bossa nova influence. And when mm. I think of elevator music, cliche thought bossa nova. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Here we have a dance track that is electronically built that's hanging out in that quiet space. But yeah. it's a quiet, it's one that compels you to move at the mm. same time. Like I this is impeccable. This is like just I have nothing but praises to sing about Luke Tell. I really do. It's it's a it's a very hard balance to achieve, like to have kind of like that electronic bass and at the same time maintain kind of like that quiet singular wavelength vibe, without making it seem like it, it's like underproduced. You know? Yeah. I appreciate that. I think this is one like I I think this is one of those songs that could have a longevity outside of Eurovision to it too. Like mm. people discover it via Eurovision. And it kind of just like slips its way into being like a popular one to use on TikTok as a sound or something. Mm -hmm. Unless, I don't know if he signed a universal music group and can't use it on TikTok. But you know <laughs> what I mean. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I just, I think this is fab. All right. Let's see what we've got here. Um, all right. So what else do we have left? Do we think it's Un like unique elements? Unique elements. I, I've touched on it. It's the fact that like it's trending. And it has that quietness to it, but it compels you to move it it's at current. the same time. It's like mm -hmm. everything ties together so neatly with this. Like there's a real like ruffle of good qualities happening mm -hmm. um, that make it really special. My unique element is slightly different. I like how, um, well, I mean, it's kind of building off of yours, but this is the only, and this more so pertains to Lithuania in Eurovision. This is really the only time that I hear them go for like, future geared current pop okay. in a way that's like in a way that yeah feels like it's going to have longevity after the fact because if you look at lithuania's track record they have really good songs in their catalog for sure but in terms of just general longevity and whether or not it feels like it could stand the test of the future this is a very unique case for lithuania yeah. i'd say yeah like it it does feel a bit futuristic at the same time. I think with the way it's staged, because it's kind of tying into live, how mm. well it performed live, fabulously. And I feel like with the way it's staged, we are getting like a future club-esque look. Yeah. Like you could put this in like a video game or something, or like, especially with the lighting and the choices to use, like the, the styling as well with the clothes and everything. It mm -hmm. just has like a sleek, 
lightness to it in a way. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it'd be yeah. really good in like a puzzle game. That'd be fun. <laughs> yeah, no, this is it. It it's so good. It's so good. Like it's really good. We know, and live, it's excellent still as well. Live, like, it's I great. Think, yeah, like uh, that's the first Sylvester can get the crowd going, yeah. even even in like the slow tone of singing. Like works yeah. works completely down. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And do we think it's going to qualify? Yes. Oh, wow. This is, this is a top fan contender potentially. Come on, you guys. I'm, <laughs> still, feel, I'm still living in the world with this could potentially win Eurovision. I just, I, I refuse <laughs> to like go into one of those. I know like the, the odds are narrowing, da narrowing down and we think we know we have the winner at this point, I think. But this, it, like, this could sneak up in there. You never People know. People going to be like Zagreb or Zurich. And then it turns out, no, we're going to <laughs> Vilnius, <laughs> baby. <laughs> that'd be fun honestly like that that could be great and look tell as a winning eurovision song for like the transition music for, and stuff for last year could really work yeah yeah next, so next year yeah and it, we've already i streamed the heck out of this one mm -hmm. yeah it's it's a street it's a stream fitting song it also is just like so radio at the yeah. same time that it, it's also, just you, you just have it on and it just sounds great and like we got this song early. Mm -hmm. It was like when I say we got the song early, I mean like it was one in the first semifinal. I think it was like the first song in the first semi in Lithuania, right? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was, it in, like, was the real first early on. Or and something. I, yeah. I was hooked we from the first early. time I heard it. Mm -hmm. So I've been streaming it that long. I haven't gotten tired of it yet. Uh, All right. Monica Maria, you will someday have your day. Just keep singing country ballads, girl. I promise. But anyways, <laughs> Peter Heidrich says, my winner. Honestly respectable a very respectable winner awesome yep like lithuania great. really should be oh. proud i knew but you said let's talk about luke Telk, and we did um we, did. we just great. did <laughs> okay so this is from mark luke uh -huh. Telk really blows the dance pop songs out of the water i still worry about how well it will do um if a big five or sweden had sent this we'd probably be talking about potential winner yeah if sweden had sent this we'd be talking winner potential but sweden is not that creative i mean t also, low key, the staging for this and Sweden's song are so similar to me. Like, mm. Sweden is giving us like, Lithuania had that big budget. The lighting's the same. They both use mm. red and black, like not red and black. Oh my god, red and blue lighting in a way that's like blocking everything else out. It's yeah. like just the color palettes are so similar. It's like if if Lithuania's national final had more budget, you know what I mean? Is what I'm getting from stage the staging in Sweden. Mm -hmm. um ariana says such a banger um let's see here i mean lithuania doesn't need budget though they really just need good camera angles and the performance to serve face and that's what sells them through sometimes okay Vanya lubich says if you asked me to describe luke Hulk in one word i would say cool the staging is impeccable the lighting is mesmerizing and i love it yes of mm -hmm. mm -hmm. all of that and then one more comment here from mark uh, Luke Tilk is giving me the same feeling of Lights Off from Czechia in 2022. It's a dance track, but it still has a chill, moody vibe. Um, that's hard. That's a hard feeling to convey. Mm. One second, I have to do something about this dog. So it's interesting that you, uh, Mark, compare it to Czechia 2022 because, like, the chill, moody vibe is right. But um, the thing is, I think with Lights Off, Czechia 2022 there's kind of like that quality where it's like I'm standing in an H&M or it's like I'm, I'm standing in, in like a, in, in a, in a retail store. Yeah. That, um, look tough does not have check your 2022. It felt so produced that you would be able to hear it in the public, but look talk. I feel like that was, a, that's a song that you'd hear like in an Uber. Um, I've heard, I've heard, I'm trying to think of what songs related to Eurovision I've ever heard no Uber. I heard Noche Tera in Madrid. That was great. Woo! Well, I mean, that's not Eurovision. I had, still. I had a Jamala song. It wasn't, it wasn't 1944 in Uber once. Oh, wow. That was a, a Jamala that was listener. That's an Uber, Uber driver. Ride. Oh, yeah. He's like some Turkish guy. Nice. Um, And then that's probably the closest thing I've had. I had a guy listening to Hatsune Miku in an Uber once, and he didn't know who Hatsune Miku was. That's yeah. okay. That's very <laughs> okay. I guess Miku's making moves in the year, whatever. Because I mean, it was earlier this year. Um, she was born, or sorry, invented in 2007 or something like that. That's when she was released. So, 
I, I guess. Oh, yeah, me too. I used to be a Vocaloid just... girl down, you guys. I used to be a Never. Vocaloid girly. <laughs> what was that song with Luca? I really liked. Never mind. Um, so George's Papadopoulos says, I like Luca. Um, it will absolutely qualify and probably be top 10. Yeah. Everything you said, I could very easily see. No problem. All right. So, yeah, let's go ahead and go on to our next one up. Let's talk. Oh, wow. We're really speeding through these this week. We are. I know. We're fast for some reason. <laughs> now we're fine. We finally are efficient. Mm -hmm. This is our, <laughs> our, our, our. So, next up, we have Dizzy by Ollie Alexander for mm -hmm. the United Kingdom. You know, it's so funny because I think about like, let's go back five years ago and say, hey, you know, you know, the UK. It's going to be, like, anticipated. People are going to be excited for it in a couple of years. And you're like, what are you talking about? It's the UK. <laughs> and yeah, now if, if someone told me that, I'd be like, back up. Don't make eye contact with me. But now, now it <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> now it makes sense because, I mean, Dizzy, it feels very British. First of all, it has, like, such a Britishness in, in its, like, dancey kind of like clubby discotheque vibe that is just incredibly well i mean that's also a unique element we could talk about that later yeah but uh lyrics okay yeah we, we got to analyze these lyrics uh, you, you seem guys confused the, no it, it's just because the lyrics don't do much for me you guys there aren't uh -huh. that many there aren't that many lyrics so there isn't that much to, to dissect um we have three choruses one verse and two lines that I guess would be composite in the second verse. But overall, yeah, there aren't a ton of lyrics. I, I'm going to read to you the first um, verse just so you kind of get the, you, you get the unique lyrical part of the song. There's mm -hmm. a place where we break the line, make it a circle, redefine, beautiful gardens, eternal flowers. You know the way, so take me there. I don't like that lyrically. I don't like it. Mind it. It's I don't not like it. that. I mean, but I mean, it's simple. fine. I, I don't pay attention to that anymore later on in the song because the song isn't about that first verse, okay? Yeah, I mean, I like the whole idea of, like, part. I like the, the quality of, like, the metaphor or whatever we're going to call it. Yeah. Of make me dizzy with your, from your kisses. It's mm. just, like, this whole, like, being in love with somebody so much mm -hmm. that something as simple as, a, as their kiss makes you feel lightheaded. It's like, making you giddy and feel silly and like almost childlike in a way i yeah. like that you know i like that that's what we're building off the song with lyrically it's simple it's evocative to me and it, it gets mm -hmm. across an emotion really easily okay nice yeah i i mean like there's not really anything here lyrically that's extra special but i do like that as the thought like there's a like you know pull me close i feel stillness in the air Time is frozen. All memories are lost. Like that's a nice kind of like in this moment with me and you together, nothing else really matters. I, I like that. Yeah. It, it is functional. That is, that is definitely a functional section of the lyrics. Yeah. I, I think this is, I think it's fab. I, I mm -hmm. mean, lyrically nothing really special, but what's there I think does really soothe the song and help. That's you a know? good way to put that. Yeah. It's that like, makes a lot it's of not, sense. I swear, most people don't listen to lyrics anyway, if we're being completely honest. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a minority half the time. Because mm -hmm. for some reason, 2024, everyone just figured out what Hey Yow was about. I'm like, were we not paying attention 20 years ago? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Honestly, low-key, lyrically dizzy makes me think of, oh my gosh, just like Heaven by the Cure. I know, that's going to be blasphemous. To say, oh, wow, well, what the, the hell? Same. It has the same, it, it brings the same kind of feeling out of me lyrically mm, as that okay. song does. That makes sense. I just feel like, you know, The Cure, just like Heaven's a better song lyrically speaking, uh -huh. but it has the same kind of vibe to me of the feeling it's supposed to make you feel. And I get that feeling from both. Mm, nice. Yeah. It, I mean, it's good because, it, I mean, generally it looks like people were able to access that feeling because it's it's a popular song, this one. Yeah. And like production wise, we have this really sleek, polished song that's like kind of built. What was it? The synth riff it's built off of. I love it. Mm -hmm. It's like a really, it's, it's like the synth kind of basically stays the same the whole time. Mm -hmm. And there's almost like these chiming, like this um, mm -hmm. chime that's going on. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to describe it as. Like when I was listening to it, it was making me think of 
have you ever had to play the 1812 overture at school or anything like that? I don't even know what that is. It's a song like you know when there's fireworks on the fourth of July. Oh, oh yeah, huh? That's the 1812 overture. Oh, and there's the one point in the song. song. Okay. Yeah. I, which is weird because you know what that song's about? Huh. It's about the French invasion of Russia during the 1812 war. Oh yeah. What the hell? No, I had no idea about that. I think and we, we just use it for it our fireworks. Of cannons. Yeah. I think <laughs> we, we just use it because it's cannons. A cannon in it. Um, but like when you play it, there's a part in the song that they give you listen to the full whole song like i had to do for my final exam in 12th grade um there's a part where there's like chi- what are they called i guess they're called chimes it's like these tubular things mm-hmm. and then you strike them with these rubber mallets it's been forever since i've like done this but like it, there's like it's this a very like, peculiar kind of, kind of like a like a yeah ringing. yeah it's like the, that's happening in the background of this one mm-hmm. and like it's evoking like an almost like romantic bell chime at a wedding chapel to me ah, like the whole I, thing okay. is married, like yeah. the sounds that are going on in this kind of just bring it all into like i'm so in love with you let's forget about everything else let's get married let's just be focused on this and i like that i think that mm. that like it's all tying together really nicely in a way it's it's really interesting that you bring up those chimes because i also hear that like but i can't distinguish it like i also hear those chimes and i think it plays into the lyrics very well in, in that kind of like, here's this quality where we're trying to achieve dizziness. I have a feeling there's going to be a goal, like the the uh, British delegation's goal is going to be like w- the end of the song. It, ha- it has to simulate the sensation of dizziness. And with those chimes, it's kind of like the buzzing in your head, you know, like when you start to get dizzy. Because like as you get later on in the song and more distorted, you start to get like almost more dizzy. It's like almost that simulation of it. So it's like building to get to that end is what it seems like to me. Have you ever seen Lee Miz on stage live? Uh, through a DVD, not not like in not in live, okay. but well, the DVD I, version, yes. Of it shows live. up at the Kennedy Center like once every eighteen months. Um, so, <laughs> um, so you know, in Lee Miz, they use a rotating stage. Yeah, stage it like Lee Miz, baby. Give me some like that would, staging. That would be the best thing in the in the UK's interest and to would, do. And it would tie to the music video too, because the music video has that rotating stage. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, oh, I have you know. Okay, I'm a, I'm gonna call it right now. When we get to the bridge, there isn't an end. There isn't a stop. Like when they do that, that's when we're gonna get like the spinning. I bet you that's when it's gonna happen. And I hope it's that spinning platform and not some camera coming down like that, because that looks cheese. Yeah. Make yeah. me make me feel sick because I get motion sickness really easily. Yeah, same here. Um, make me need to take a Dramamine after the performance, <laughs> please. Please. Biggest compliment. This made me feel like I was gonna puke. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. Go for it, um, UK. What have we touched on yet? Um, we've touched on unique. Oh, we touched on basically everything except for do we stream this? If it's not obvious, yes, I do. Um, I stream this, and I also stream. The collect like the remix of Kite with Benjamin and Gross that Ali did. It's, it's so, good. so good. It's so good. <laughs> like, I, I stream this like together. 75% of the time, personally. Uh, 75%. I never skip this. I love this. Mm-hmm. But it's up my alley because I'm like, I'm weird. Um, but no, I love this. And do we think it, oh, it doesn't have to qualify? It doesn't have to. Hey, Ollie's hey, already in, baby. Hey. I mean, he he will be performing in the semifinal though, because remember, you guys, for some reason. The, the board of directors has decided that the Big Five and the host country will be performing in the semifinals to yeah. affect the results of the semifinals potentially. Who knows and who cares? I love this. It's fun. All Gosh, right. Let's go like ahead this. and see what we've got comment wise. <laughs> From Mark. I think I know Mark's in the UK too, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. I just said so in the, the comment. Um, I love Dizzy. It's actually been received well in the UK. I worry about how it will do. It's a g- great part of Ollie's discography. But I don't know if it's ESC competitive. I think it has a competitive edge. I think it has a no. little bit of an edge. It has a little heat to it, I think. And then uh, another going off my last comment, too. I worry if it's underperforms, the UK public will lose its faith in ESC. Sam turned everything around, but it's fragile at the moment. Yeah, it's... it's huh. 
the British public's in a British public. Like your general British person is going to be your average general British person, I think, no matter what. I, I noticed that for, I mean, with Sam being the exception, typically the UK act, they have like a pretty bad run in with kind of like the, the like public attitude just with, with within their own country and there there's like a little not even headbutting per se but you, you could tell there's a little friction there between whoever artist is selected and the uk like public slash delegation that there's like it just there's slight uncomfortability about it about their approach something that i would say i didn't exactly see that with sam but yeah okay and then with aria winning son i like my country's entry a decent amount but i feel it's kind of mean saying i expect a lot i expected a lot more Something like their song Sanctify um, is what I expected mm. with dark pop song. But Dizzy feels a bit safe, I'd say. I think that's a common sentiment I've seen online from British people uh. or people who know Ollie's discography. Is mm. that Dizzy just feels a bit safe, safer than what they were expecting. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, I've, I've definitely heard that too. Which, yeah. I mean, like there, there has to be a reason why this was picked as the song to go to Eurovision for him. And I think it's, I think it's because of like the dizzy quality that we're trying to achieve on stage. Mm -hmm. um, and Vanessa T says, I listen to Dizzy every day. It's on my heavy rotation. I have a feeling the staging is going to be great. And I trust him as a performer, which nice. we didn't talk about how well the song can be performed live wonderfully. Excellently. Well, I mean, Ollie is a very seasoned, very conditioned performer. I have zero, I have zero qualms about whether or not he's going to perform it well live because he is. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, Vanya Lubitsch, another song I like that I like, I wanted to love because I love Ollie's music, but I don't. It it pales in comparison with Luke Talk for me. So again, mm. kind of comparing it to our last one, Luke Talk. So yeah. yeah. Um, let's see here. And then last one from Georgius Papadopoulos. I absolutely love the UK. It's my top 10 for the third time in a row. Nice. Wow. So apparently the UK has won over Georgios Papadopoulos. Congratulations, Excellent. Sam. <laughs> <laughs> I needed to come top 13. Honestly, I think this year is so competitive that even like top 15 is a it's good great. spot this yeah. year. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know where this is going to land, but I feel like it can really go anything lower than 15th. I'd call it robbery. Mm -hmm. But like, it can really land pretty high up, I think. Oh, it definitely can. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I don't see this getting bottom 10. I just don't. Yeah. Like, it it's, if anything, I kind of see it landing between, like, 11th and 13th in that yeah. range I mean, where I legitimately I see it. But you can also see if the staging is really good at coming top 10. Yeah. The staging has to be, like, it has to hit the mark, though. It has to hit yeah. the mark. Yeah, because with this song, I feel like we're just waiting on the staging because, like, we, yeah, we already explained everything else. Yeah, so let's move on then, I guess, to our last one this week, which is Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Nemo is going to be performing for us the code. Let's go ahead and get into these lyrics. You want to start off there, Jordan? All right, so the code, you guys. Welcome to the show. Let everybody know I'm done playing the game. I'll break out of the chains. You better buckle up. I'll pour another cup. This is my bohem, so drink it up, my friend. This story is my truth. And then I'm going to read through the chorus because it's the response to that. Mm -hmm. I went to hell and back to find myself on track. I broke the code. Like Ammonites, I just gave it some time. Now I found paradise. I broke the code. There's there. I like how this song has a story to it. There's a yes. plot to it. There was a goal that was attained already just in the verse and the chorus. Um, lyrically, this song is, it's, it's pulling a lot of different levers. It's taking a lot of list, risks in its execution, but overall it has an, it has an overscoping message of like liberation from an evil or maladaptive cycle. And I appreciate that lyrically. It's, it's, it's well-written. I don't know what to say, like, other than I, I appreciate the lyrics of this song a lot. I agree with that statement as well. I think that this definitely has to come, especially when we're like getting to references of uh, later on zeros and ones. That's clearly referencing binary, yeah, um, in computer programming. So I think the whole song really has, I feel, 
a personal connection. I don't know. I'm sure they've said this, but it's like a personal connection to gender and mm-hmm. like breaking out of the gender binary and, you know, being non-binary. Yeah. Um, which I got that immediately. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. okay. I get where these references are coming from in a way. Um, I, I love this. I feel like that this is one of those songs you can apply to yourself or apply to many situations outside of just, you know, gender identity. Mm-hmm. Um, you yeah. can kind of, like you said, in any kind of maladaptive cycle, you can look at this and go, okay, I'm breaking out of like this box or whatever I've been put into. Mm-hmm. I love this. <laughs> um, I like the references in here as well. I mean, how else do I phrase this? We've got Bohem, which is a reference to the opera. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure. Like, best guess, yeah, drink up, my friend. Yep, no, that's definitely giving me the opera. At least mm-hmm. I hope it's the opera. Opera. If it's not the opera and it's a reference to the song from Rent, we're gonna have beef. I'm gonna have to no, fight all. No, of it, no it's fight. not the song from Rent. It is not the song from Rent. You know why? It's the opera. You know why? Because Nemo also sings this in opera. Opera is a big part of this song. <laughs> Sorry. And they sing it's it like very Nemo well. Nemo are gonna have some beef. <laughs> Rent. It's like, is that section of your song about that like song from Rent? Like, is it about that? A song from Rent, because if it is, then I'm gonna fight you. No, yeah, it's it's not. I promise it's not. Because if it were, then I would be just as pissed. <laughs> that musical is a ride, and that is my least favorite song in the entire musical. Like, I I can't stand it. I hate Rent. I hate. <laughs> you guys know this week you'd be getting references to like the 1812 overture <laughs> and Rent in the same stream. <laughs> Uh, you guys are getting this for free. Like we aren't even charging you for this. <laughs> you get to see us be a mess for free. <laughs> oh my gosh! You know it's like being my in my brain. It's terrible up here. It's awful. <laughs> yeah, I got I got I got to do a hard reset, like some dusting up in there. It's it's getting pretty. It's getting pretty clunky. Some cobwebs are out there. Let's spring yeah. clean my brain. Um, I'm sorry. Mm. Where are we at? <laughs> um uh, oh yeah we were finishing up talking about the lyrics the lyrics are great you guys i really appreciate the lyrics they're very enjoyable i'm just yeah like there, there's so many things happening here lyrically there's so many references to different things mm-hmm. um i think you, you have to have a bit, a bit of cleverness to you to catch all of them yeah definitely. i'm sure i'm not catching all of them myself. you gotta be kind of educated <laughs> gotta know some everything. stuff you've gotta yeah. be good at jeopardy i don't know um <laughs> yeah no this is and like I, I, yeah so let's talk about production and genre what genre do we put this in? Because it, genre is not the point. Like, it it's not genre is not what we're aiming for, and it's not what we executed. So generally, I think, yeah, like genre is not a part of the discussion per se. I would say mm-hmm. more so yeah. production. I mean, production. You have, this production is tight. You mm-hmm. got to keep it tight because we're going from kind of like pop music to like opera. Then there's a bit of rap and there's drum and bass heading up at the end. Yeah. It's got a little bit of everything going on in it. And I think that's like kind of the point. Yeah. That also fits with the lyrical content of the song too in this way that's like like I have to do something really different well. in order to break the cycle kind of a thing. Exactly. It, it, and it, it fits, fits the theme. That. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's it's good. Like it uh, okay, to be honest with yeah. you, acoustically I at times feel like the song is off balance because okay. of how because of just kind of like the weight of each transition like okay. the pop section is i feel complemented by the operatic section which which i kind of feel like is jumbled up a little bit by the rap section which it jumbles up even more like following the other pop and opera section um i don't think the rap is the corrupting factor but i do think that if i'm not in the right headspace to listen to the song the entire piece can feel off balance to me like it can just feel like it's not um like, uh, like the pieces are just a little too different for me to be completely like satiated with in terms of like the overall picture, but Does not every time, be, not every time. Does it get to I, be too much for you? Almost, almost too much at times. Okay. Yeah. Because, uh, little... I mean, I like maximalism. I like throwing everything at the wall, taking nothing down for sure. Yeah. But I don't know, like there's a certain degree of artfulness that I also feel like is, is demanded within this song that needs to be respected that i'm also not achieving so it it's definitely kind of just like my consumption pattern that's being challenged i would say like it's overstimulating almost overstimulating i would say yeah that's that would be a good way to put that 
okay. because yeah, it, it has me thinking in too many different directions at times. But overall, yeah, I, it's it's enjoyable. Okay, yeah, no, for me personally, it's just one of those things where it's like I like music that does that. Mm -hmm. I think for me though, my biggest issue with the production is maybe I would like to have the transitions bleed more, have mm -hmm. like more of a gradient leading in. But I think the biggest issue is just you have a three minute time constraint. Yeah, you can't exceed that three minutes. So maybe if there was like more time, you would be better if it was like more bleeding in and out rather than just be. being like so abrupt. Mm -hmm. Um, or even like having like the leaning leaning a bit. I totally get that. It's like, mm -hmm. but. I like kind of things that are overstimulating in a way musically because mm -hmm. my favorite kind of song is a song I can listen to like 10 times in a row just on repeat and then each time I listen to it I'm picking up a different thing in the track like uh -huh. I'm picking up a different thing that's happening in that production I'm like oh okay this is what's happening here or this is what's happening musically like I'm like oh, oh that instrument there I like that like I like my brain is always going super fast mm -hmm. so if I'm having a song that's keeping up in my brain I love it and this kind of does that for me, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like it, you can't listen to this song latently. You can't put it on in the background. It is a focus kind of song. Yeah. Once you focus into it, then you tap in. But yeah, it, it, it's not exactly the kind of song. It's not like Dizzy, for example, where it's just like if you hear it playing on the radio, then it would it would just provide like good background music. No, this is a performance mm -hmm. piece that requires your attention. Yeah, I, I really think so. It's. Mm -hmm this is i like this a lot yeah. also yeah um so what else do we have here am i off uh, how well can it be performed live mm. fabulously so nicely no, so nicely no. nemo wow like you're off you're off to be a star pretty soon yeah no mm -hmm. very well performed very, very well -y performed live performed live very well wow i'm like <laughs> lost in the english language now i am confused i do have okay. to say it's very admirable to hear them kind of move from from kind of like the soft operatic tone into kind of like a harsher like rap delivery and then back mm -hmm. into pop it's very hard i would think to make those transitions vocally but you yeah. know executes it well they have like the kind of voice timbre where it doesn't really seem like we're being like shot left and right about like the different sections in the song it, there is still the flow there, and it's because of their vocal delivery. Yeah. Um. Okay. What else do we have left? Do Do we think it's gonna qualify? Yeah. Oh my gosh, you guys, this can win. This if can this win. Qualify. We, I. If this, if this doesn't qualify, I I am going to lay down on the floor and just I will hibernate until the year twenty sixty two. So yeah, like I don't. It doesn't make any sense if it doesn't qualify. Oh Every, my like, gosh. Like it has so many. It has so many things that different kinds of people will like that will gain votes just based off of like all of the different things that it has going on you know it's a little bit of a variety show but it, it has pull for multiple different crowds and i think it can it can win qualification is not a question to me yeah i think and for me it was immediate like i didn't have to think mm. about it i was like amazing yeah. like you know the first time i heard it i was like oh, this is what we're doing today switzerland okay Deeply i'm glad impressive. you're out of your the doldrums that the last two years were for you, Switzerland. Mm -hmm. I guess they just like the country just needed a little a, a break. They just needed a break to be like, you know what? Let's send some bullshit for a couple of years and then we'll go ahead and on I mean honestly the back. investment was worth it. The investment yeah. was worth it because now we have the code. And yeah. Y'all, like it 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 goes down. The song goes right. down hard. Do we stream Let's it? Let's look at some comments. Oh yeah. Comments, you guys. What do y'all have to say? From Aria Winning Sun, I am completely okay with a Swiss win. It is not in my top 10. I think it's just about 16th, but this is a very solid winner winning song if it does win. Okay, mm. so it's not your favorite, but if it won, you'd be okay with it. Which I feel like, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm in the same boat. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I, I totally get that. Mm. Um from Mark, the code just hits me like a truck. That's a great way to think. <laughs> That's a great way to put it. You. Uh -huh. um, I have no complaints about the song or uh, Nemo as a performer. I would love to see this win, although I'd rather have Croatia win so ESC has a cheaper for those who want to return. You know what? That's a good 
That's a that's very the good issue point. With Switzerland, not, with my biggest problem with Switzerland winning is how it's expensive. expensive. Yeah, like we then I'm not going. Then I would not be able to go probably. But here's the thing: when I look at the cost of like hotels in Switzerland, is Switzerland expensive or like? I mean, I figure it's expensive because it's Switzerland. But mm. I'm like, it's the same price as getting like a hotel in the city I live in. Huh. Like it, I feel like the price is about the same. I should ask my friend Kim because she would know. Oh, I'm like name dropping people. My friend who lives in Switzerland now. I should ask. <laughs> the, I should ask her. Like, is it more expensive than being here, or like, what, what's up with the Swiss? The Swiss That's actually the some. I mean, it's very reasonable research to start conducting right now because Switzerland very oh, well could win. Yeah, I was looking at possible host cities. And which host cities, like... All right, you're, you're moving a million miles a minute like, now. <laughs> I just got curious. Let me, yeah. you know, let me look at these countries who could possibly win Eurovision to see how expensive it is. Okay. And plus, I mean, it's Switzerland. It's cold, though. Is it cold in yeah. May there? I don't know. I, I feel like it would be... I don't I don't really know. I don't know that much just about like, European weather. And that's why I typically pack very poorly when I go to Europe, so... It's like, I don't know, like, Celsius temperatures... I know, I know 35 celsius is hot yeah 35 that's like 100 cold. degrees like r- right under 100 cold. degrees i'm sorry i'm gonna go on a little rant here europeans you are 100 percent correct when it comes to measurements mm-hmm. like length yeah it's true distance all that stuff 100 percent agree with you metric is superior mm-hmm. when it comes to like weight distances whatever vastly superior when it comes to temperature fahrenheit is better and I will die on that hill. Fahrenheit is superior to Celsius 100%. Ooh, ooh. Because I'm sorry, 35? But that's such a low number. Like, mm-hmm. You know what and I mean? And we're just like, 100. And it's like, that makes sense. Yeah, 100 <laughs> makes sense. That's hot. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it just... And the other issue I have with Celsius is you have to use so many de- more decimals to get an accurate reading. Yeah. So you're right. Metric is more accurate with measurements outside of temperature. I'm just gonna leave it there. Oh dang! We, I'm sorry. I, that, I had gonna get, I had to get, get off some my chest for a Fahrenheit second. Fahrenheit haters up in here now. Yeah, hate no, on but, Fahrenheit all you want, but Fahrenheit feels right. But we will concede and say we are enlightened. Metric is superior in most facets, for sure. Yes. Sorry. Um. Sorry. Where where were we? Oh, do we um, stream? I'm going to comments. No. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comments. Comments. Thank you, bitch. Um, gave gives me winter vibe. Wait. Gave me winter vibe from the moment one. Uh, why am I having so much trouble reading English today? Gave me winter Probably. vibes from moment one. I absolutely love the mixture of genres. The lyrics are personal and meaningful. The music video is effective, excellently performed, and it ticks all the boxes. Also, there's a train in it. There's a train in it. There <laughs> is indeed a train in it. Wow. Choo choo. That's a meme. That's weird. Right. Okay. Um, I don't Do know. Do you stream the song? Yes. Mm. 100% I stream this. I stream yeah. it, but there are times when I do feel a little bit cold, you guys. I do feel a little bit cold to it, and it's just because I want to be more mellow. I don't exactly want to be overstimulated at the moment, but yeah, very good song. Very good song. Maybe we have one person already arguing with me about the temperature thing. I'm going to ignore you. We're going to yeah. have this conversation off stream. <laughs> If you have this Let's conversation crap. off stream, Let's because crap. I know you know me Pepsi personally. Can't. You have me on like three different social media sites. You can message me there. <laughs> okay, George's Papadopoulos says I paid six euro for an espresso shot in Switzerland. That seems like Ew. no, thank you. No, thank you. That's like I what drink, seven dollars twenty cents. Hell no. Uh uh-uh. uh. I mean, I don't know. Let me check to see. Let Let's do the conversion. Let's do the USD conversion because we are we are like neanderthalic americans and we need that we need that like translated into our terms it's about like eight dollars that's not that bad for an espresso shot yeah. for one espresso shot eight dollars no that's not happening oh is there a coffee you shop don't need to pay... the prices of i i personally don't think you ever need to pay more than like three dollars for an espresso shot which roughly would be like two euro 70 i think we're not like over here, like am I crazy? Is that you don't bougie? drink co- you don't is drink coffee all that much, a, though. This, huh. is how, this, is, this is how I find that I'm bougie. No, I really. I, don't I guess drink you are bougie, like, but I guess I, you are bougie if you want to pay eight dollars for an espresso shot. I feel like that's reasonable. It's not reasonable. It's not reasonable. 
Oh my gosh. I'm over here I like, mean, then again, like, like I, I, I also need to retract a little bit because the uh, cafe that I go to will give me my espresso for free because the owner's my friend. So, uh, so I don't pay for espresso me. anymore. But when I do need to pay for espresso, when I do go other places, I generally am not going to aim to pay more than like three US dollars for a single espresso shot. That makes zero sense to me. Okay, let's see. I'm looking here. It's like espresso gate um, happening on the Eurovision fam stream. I'm trying to find a cafe or something. And I'm I'm talking like a like a cafe, like an, an actual place where you get espresso and like pastries and stuff, not like a grocery store kind of or like a caf, uh -huh. like a cafeteria type of joint. I'm talking specifically about just like a uh where baristas are. Okay, because I don't like, like, last time I drank coffee, I was like, you know, um, well, that tells me how much it costs to buy a bag. I'm just using an espresso shot. Do, 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 do. Yeah, okay, I guess that is expensive. Because I'm looking here, this, in this, this is a cafe in, like, bougie part of town where, like, the houses are $2 million. Yeah. And they charge about four seventy five five dollars $5. That is still way too much to be paying for espresso. I'm sorry. Espresso, know, I've made espresso. It's just, and then you like let the water well, run. That really, is not. They don't really have espresso shots on here, though. Like that, uh, like the $5 is for like a flat white. Oh, no, espresso is $4. And espresso is $4. Okay. Georgios, I, shots. Georgios, I hope that there was at least a little bit more with your espresso shot. I hope it was like a latte that was dressed all nice or something because six euros for an espresso shot. Yeah. If Switzerland wins, I'm probably going to be too poor to go. <laughs> just, just, just putting it out there. I'm probably going to be too poor to go. I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm like, am I like crazy? I mean, yeah, six, I guess six euro is too high because this place is charging me four. Yeah. And like where it's located at um, is like kind of down the street from where the exorcist was filmed. So like, yeah, okay, I would say that's out probably here in California. Lot. And like, I'm, I'm just going to end my statement here. In California, I'm paying about two fifty for each espresso shot, two dollars fifty cents, which is okay. So here it'd be two dollars because, like, yeah, the price I found was for two shots. It was four. That's so, great. Okay, perfect. So yeah, there you go. There you go. It, it basically follows the same metric. Hey, did you guys know in the stream we talked about espresso shot prices? Espresso gate during the Eurovision fan review stream. <laughs> it. This honestly could be a continuing conversation because the idea of that pisses me off. Mark says, Should surely we... Switzerland would be cheaper than the UK or the other big five. I don't know. No, so I honestly I have Spain no... is cheap, isn't it? Spain is Spain was quite cheap. Being in Madrid was like quite cheap. We're discussing like affordability of places. Because Croatia, um, that's affordable, baby. Croatia is affordable. Lithuania is affordable. Lithuania is um, affordable, but it's too cold. The UK, I feel like, oh no, I've never been. I never stay like whenever I stayed in France, I would stay with family, and when mm. I stay in Germany, I also stay with family. I it's it, it's kind of bad, but anytime I go to the UK, there's always just like some really bad vibe and a really bad experience. I, I don't, I'm not attributing it to the country per se, but it's just I find it funny. My, my biggest issue with Switzerland winning at this point is I don't like Swiss German. Um, it oh yeah! Me deeply. Oh no! And that, that'll that'll be the leading German. Like when <laughs> once we get there, like you will hear nothing but Swiss German, because it's the German. But I do prefer Swiss French, which we've been there before. Swiss French, it, it's just more melodic. It's softer. It has more of like a, like a, like a sweetness to it, as opposed okay. to like national French. I would say. So I think at this point, like the reason we went off on a tangent is because like, oh, how expensive would Switzerland be? So we we agree that this is like a potential winner here. Yeah, we, I feel like we have like, easily. Yeah, this is a potential take the take the throne. Wait, honestly, Switzerland could use another win. They've only had two, right? Yeah, Liss and Celine. Yeah, and it's been a while. It's been like previous to my birth. And they last one, so I'm okay with like you know another Swiss one. Okay. Yeah, that was nine, nine years previous to my birth when they last one. Well, so. we've established you are secretly an infant. <laughs> um, you are a baby parading as a as an adult. 
I was going to say a baby parading as a human being, but that was wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Same thing. I could I could be an illusion, you guys. I could be AI. No, you're not. So stupid. So dumb. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, you guys. If, if you want to be, if you want to be that terrible song from uh, Norway this year, you can be that terrible song. My superhero, what? My superhero, what? Yeah. Oh no. Like, get a Modelo in me, and I, I could be doing that. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, wow, we we just being sorry. Silly. We are fully just, just being. It just silly. established that the town a town near me is named after a part of Germany. Ooh, now I want to go to the Swiss bakery. You have a Swiss bakery? Oh, wait, no, we have a Swiss bakery. I could go. I could go. I haven't been there in forever. Honestly, I could go for like a back cheesecake or something. I need something sweet. Oh, I can. How about giving my recipe recipe for back? Okay, you know what? Anyways, guys. You guys, we, we got to end the stream. Sorry. <laughs> We're basically um, keeping you and talking about nothing. <laughs> thank you again so much for yeah. joining us. If you enjoyed the stream, don't forget to, for hit, forget to hit like. Oh, wait. Poll. Oh, my God. Poll. Oh, we Even literally almost forget this every up. single time. Every single stream, we almost Even forget this. up, like, yeah. ready to go. I can mm -hmm. discuss this. Mm -mm. It's on a different screen, so I'm not going to look at you guys for a second. Now I have my so AI our last my place this week was Australia with seven percent. Here's Boo. the thing: it's a strong week. It's a strong week. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's a very strong week. I feel like this this week in particular was very strong. It had a lot of the contenders, you know. And it honestly wasn't like a runaway situation like it has been. Uh -uh. So seven percent of people said their favorite one this week was Australia. All right, second place. The UK with 11 points. 11 You mean fourth percent. place? Fourth place, yeah. yeah. Fourth was <laughs> the UK. Okay. Um, just looking at some comments, see if anyone said anything about the UK. No one said really anything about the UK. Um, all right. Third was Belgium with 16%. Interesting. And we did have okay. one comment from somebody. Um, Luvushka21 said Belgium all the way. And then our second place was Switzerland with the code with 30%. Oh, what? Yeah. Oh, that is so. Oh, anyways. Okay. So our winner has to be then Luke Luke Bell, Bell. Right? And oh we have gosh. a lot of people like um, Ariana Banana says Nemo exclamation point. And Ariana is here in chat. Um, and Nemo. then we have. Nemo. They need your support to vote for them. Like, it's honestly a lot of people like chanting Luke Telk, Luke Telk in these comments. Um, and then one person was like, none of these are, are my top five. Okay, guess what? It was just which one of those five is your favorite. So, yeah. Anyways, so <laughs> um, thank you for joining us. Um, mm -hmm. Tuesday, we'll put the other poll up for next week. And next week is going to be covering, um, I have the list here in front of me. Next week, we are going to be discussing... Slovenia, Norway, Ireland, Poland, and Moldova. So I hope you're excited for next week because I know I am. I am so um, excited for next week. I am pumped. I know. Next week is a strong week again. Uh -huh. like, at this point, like we're we're just nothing but strong. I think this whole season's been really strong. Th but, yeah. This is a strong year, you guys. I'm really happy with how strong this year is. Yeah. So if you enjoyed the stream, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and comment. And if you're subscribed, you get lots of things happening. Don't forget to go to eurovisionfam.com. In the description box, you will find our links to the articles we discussed earlier um, and links to socials and all that other good stuff. Also, the description box is in below. It's to the right now. So to mm. the right is where you'll find that stuff. Uh, thank you all so, so much. And we'll be back again next week, same time, to talk mm. about those five songs. And if you can guess the theme, guess the theme. Oh, Elodie just shut up. Hi, Elodie. We're ending stream Hello, now. Elodie. <laughs> I love Elodie. I'm sorry. We're mutuals. We're um, just about to close up, but you can go ahead and watch back the stream to see what you missed. And yeah. yeah, we would love to have you in the next one, too. Great. So thank you so much. And we will be bouncing. Yeah, you did arrive at the end. I'm not going to make a joke about you being French either. So bye. <laughs> Adieu.